So today I'm going to take a look at how you might begin to understand all the various different document types that might be in your ind index. Um, so tools like PacketBeat, which um, I'm looking at today, looking at some PacketBeat data, uh, they generate a number of different record types, um, each of which have many different fields. So um, the list of fields in my index is actually quite long and quite large. And one of the problems I found was trying to figure out which fields um, you would expect to find on individual records. Um, and, you know, which sort of things to put in your discover tab or something. Um, I'm using Sculptor here, um, as, we'll, as we'll see in a minute, um, why. Um, but it's often difficult to try and figure out, you know, when you're looking at a new data set, um, which field names are going to be useful, especially if you're just dumping in um, lots of different document types into an index. So PacketBeat has, has tried to structure um, the outputs, um, but it's still um, a little tricky coming into it cold uh, to try and understand what, what field types are uh, being used here. So one of the things I've, I've added in Sculptor is um, support for the field exists query which is sort of one of the two um, main things that we're going to use here today to understand our data. So the field exists query, um, we've got various different query types, leucine queries, boolean queries, but the field exists query is just one that, where you can basically say, um, pick one or more fields, um, and you can say, find me all the documents that contain this field. Um, so AMQP, for example, is listed in this uh, index pattern that I have here for packet beat. Uh, but if I run my search, there aren't, a, there aren't actually any documents that have AMQP because that wasn't uh, a protocol that I was uh, tracking using PacketBeat or generating events for. So it's a bit of a game of you know, trying to go through the various different fields and trying to figure out which ones you might have in your index and if they have any values. Um, so what you can do um, using the field exists query, like any other query um, in Sculptor or Elasticsearch generally, um, is you can select all of these guys um, and then we can drop them into um, an adjacency matrix. So that's what I use to draw um, relationships in this relationship tab here. So the idea is we can pick up any choice of query um, and we can drop it into the query builder here and it will draw the connections between the things. Um, and this paints a kind of interesting picture. I can actually probably get rid of the um, the query to say, do they exist? I can just say match all effectively. Um, but what we can see is that there are some sort of core attributes here um, and the circles are sized appropriately. So if we actually we have a sort of slider here based on document counts, so we can see that you know, the core attributes um, found on every document generated in this packet beat index are things like type, and um, what else have we got? Timestamp and beat and host. So these are the sort of core attributes that you might choose to put in your discover um, tab for your um, selection of documents, because it doesn't really matter what sort of document types you generally have. Uh, they're going to have these sort of core uh, packet beat attributes. But then as you kind of wind the, the slider back, you can see that there are a number of other attributes that come from other different record types. So it's perhaps interesting to figure out um, what sort of values go in this type field here and add those into the, uh, into the graph, the adjacency matrix. So we can pick these, these guys up and say, well, let's, let's pick up the values now for, for type. So we'll, we'll take all of these things here and we'll throw those into our relationship diagram as well. Um, and we start to get um, the intersections between the types and uh, the fields that um, those types generally tend to have. So we can see the flow field obviously has all the core attributes here. Um, and then IC and PID. But all, there's a number of other attributes which aren't related at all to flow type documents. So again, you know, um, in Sculptor, we can just pick up query objects. It doesn't matter what they are. And we can drag and drop them into the query builder. And we can say, well, let's take away the flow records. And have a look at what sort of fields are being used outside of flow records. Um, and then we can see, for example, that um, DNS records make use of a, a core set of attributes here. Uh, if we look at ICMP, though, it's using only a subset of those attributes here. So that, uh, it's an interesting way of um, potentially getting your head around 
a heterogeneous index with multiple different document types and trying to understand uh, what different types of records you have and what sort of fields you can expect to find on them. Because there comes a point when you have so many fields, it's actually quite hard to manage and, and figure out what you're going to do. So that, that's essentially uh, the, the tip is to combine the adjacency matrix um, with the um, field exists uh, query. So I think I might have an example um, in my dev tools here. Yeah, so I'm, here's an example of me using an adjacency matrix in console saying, find me uh, the interconnections between documents that can uh, have the field type and also have the field writes out and client port and direction. And that's what's being used to draw uh, the diagrams that we saw in Sculptor, those kind of graph diagrams. <laughs>